Welcome to the 1% Podcast, where we take a deep dive into the lives of elite athletes and entrepreneurs, uncovering the secrets behind their performance, mental fortitude, and their relentless pursuit of becoming the best in the world. Today, we're honored to have with us one of the top female stars in the world of professional CrossFit, Alex Gazin. Alex, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Alex, you've made such a name for yourself in the CrossFit community. Can you take us back to the beginning? What first drew you to CrossFit? And what point did you realize this wasn't just a passion, but something you could pursue professionally? Yeah, um, I started in high school. My um, health teacher and one of my friend's moms kind of set me up on a blind date with it. <laughs> um, I had a lot going on in like my family life and I was super into sports. So they were like, just essentially thought it'd be another really good outlet for me. And um, they set me up on a blind date. I showed up and I was hooked from the first class because it was competitive and it was essentially like all things fitness and um the gym essentially sponsored me they let me that's come. amazing yeah it was so cool such a god thing um but they sponsored me to do classes and so i just did it as a supplement really to my sports i played lacrosse and, okay um just did it for fun and then i found out you could compete i watched um on netflix there's a fittest on earth documentary yes and i watched it and i was like i want to do that and so just kind of slowly, I kept doing it, not super seriously. And then um, in 2020, I moved to Vegas and I got married and um, I was kind of like, well, like I was at a crossroads because I either had to pay money to keep doing school or just like dive right into CrossFit. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I'll just dive in and see if I can get there. And here we are. No, that's amazing. Just yeah. an off tangent topic, but yeah. um, uh, especially, you know, having a significant other, how does yeah. that play into a role um, as being a professional athlete and kind of like the demanding hours and just the strain that that may, you know, put on yourself really. Yeah. Um, I'll say this, any spouse of a professional athlete, like it is not for the week and they deserve a lot more credit than I think they get. Um, because it's a lot of sacrifice. Like as an athlete, you make sacrifices, but your spouse has to make them too, because absolutely you can't go on late date nights. You can't go on spontaneous trips. If you do go on trips, it's very regimented. Um, you don't have energy to like go do extra things after training. So I think like there should be a huge kudos to any spouse of an athlete because they really have to carry a lot of weight. Absolutely. Yeah. Kind of leads me into my next topic is yeah. um, competitive cross was definitely not for the faint of heart. Yeah. It depends not only peak physical performance, but also incredible versatility. Mm -hmm. What does it take for you to maintain that high level of performance day in and day out? Oh man, it kind of ebbs and flows, right? Like you can't be at peak fitness all year round just because the demand of CrossFit is so huge on your body. So like right now I'm kind of in an off season and okay. where I would typically be in the gym five plus hours a day. Like right now I'm like an hour okay. and I get to enjoy the rest of the day and just really honestly more than anything, let my nervous system recover. Um, two days ago was the first night I slept through the night in like a year. Yeah. And it's something like you don't, people don't really think about like all the behind the scenes, like tolls that being an athlete takes on your body. So um, yeah, it takes a lot. I mean, I feel like in the thick of the season, you're in the gym five, six hours a day. When you're not in the gym, I'm here recovering, absolutely eating, sleeping. Like it's a full-time job. Absolutely. Yeah. I know for me being a professional coach and I know you're a professional coach yeah. and you know, I would always make sure that I'm always like checking in on, on my athletes. Can you explain how, you know, how profound like your head coach, you know, um, basically not only treats you, but kind of mentors you in that way. Yeah. Justin's like, he wears so many hats to me. Um, a, he's my coach. B, he's like a dad. He's family. Um, and because our relationship has grown over the past few years, like I feel like we're both really bought into each other. So like he checks in all the time. I'm at his house with his family all the time. Like it's a fully like invested relationship. And what makes him, I know there's, you know, there's so many coaches everywhere, right? Yeah. Like, especially with I think I, when I started coaching, didn't really have like full Instagram, so no one really seen what I did. Yeah. Um, but what specifically, you know, sets the underdog athletes apart from any other organization? Um, I would say the first thing that comes to my brain for Justin is like, no one cares more. Like, he cares so much, and sometimes almost like to a fault, or like when he's so excited and passionate, like when it's good, it feels amazing. When he's disappointed <laughs> yeah. in you, it feels like you like did something wrong and you're like, no, like just be proud of me. Um, but he cares so much. He'll invest so much time. He thinks about things 24 seven. Like he'll come in not sleeping because he was up all night thinking of 
a strategy or a thing. And so that's like the first thing. And then second of all, I feel like um, he's simple. And I think a lot of people try to reinvent the wheel sometimes with CrossFit and try to do all these fancy things. And his programming is very like concise and direct. And like, you're going to do this strength. You're going to do this gymnastics. You're going to do this accessory. Like, and it's not trying to overcomplicate it. So Absolutely. like a lot of people don't realize you can't improve unless you do things over and over Correct, and over. Yes. So some of it is like repetitive, but I think that's kind of the magic to it. Is, no, I think that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So it's clear you're just not training to compete, but training to win. Yeah. What's the process for setting performance goals and how do you push yourself to continually raise your bar? Yeah, um, I'm a super realistic person. I hate setting false expectations or like when someone starts a sport and they're like, next year I'm gonna win. And I'm like, okay, like, no. <laughs> like, like, I like to have realistic things because otherwise you end up disappointed or like this or that. Um, so for me, it's kind of been a slow growth thing. Um, I knew I was gonna make the CrossFit Games at some point. I didn't quite know when and um, it happened sooner than I anticipated. So that kind of started this catalyst of my body being ahead of my brain. Yeah. Um, so I made the CrossFit Games before I thought I was going to, and then I did a lot better than I before I thought I was going to. Um, so now it's kind of just like accepting that like I can and getting my brain to like do it. That's. Would you say that um, maybe because you developed so fast, did were you like, you know, basically be scared about being successful more than others at such a young age? Um, I wasn't scared of being successful. I think it was just harder to trust that it was the reality. Um, I think my first year that I made the CrossFit Games, um, just a segue to like make this clear, the way you qualify is like there's a series of competitions. There's an online competition and then quarterfinals, semifinals, and you make the games. Um, and the first year I made the games, the semifinals workouts were really good for me. So. I was kind of like, was it a fluke? Like, did I get there just because this was a good weekend for me? And then the next year, like, I won semifinals. And I was like, okay, it's not a fluke anymore. And so I think just, like, trusting now that, like, it's reality. It's not just a spur-of-the-moment fluke. or That's kind of where I'm at. Yeah, absolutely. I think that leads down to, is there a specific mantra or mindset that helps you focus on kind of getting through those challenging moments? Yeah, um, a few. I feel like my faith is one of them just like knowing that like God has me where I'm at for a reason and he has a timeline and I don't know that timeline so <laughs> yeah. um, things will happen when they're meant to and I just have to put my best foot forward so bringing my best attitude that I can doing everything in my power to be healthy and um, that's kind of the big one my friend Allie always says it doesn't have to be fun to be fun yeah um, yeah that's and a, that's a huge yeah. one that I like because sometimes training it's not fun um, it's brutal. Yeah, it's funny because I feel like on some of those days where like you feel the shittiest is like you have like the best workout. And I just yeah. think that like um, how do you balance that like mental preparation side with the performance side? So I know that you're in the gym mm -hmm. a lot, but what what you know level of mental preparation does it take to continue to execute that, especially during the season? Yeah, um, for people that are familiar for the CrossFit space. Um, they know that there's a lot of burnout that's happening, especially for a lot of young athletes that have been growing up in the sport. Um, for people that don't know, essentially there's been a lot of really great, amazing young athletes coming in that are way younger than the field and um, the last a few years and then the mental pressure kind of like burns them out. And so that's something I've really been trying to essentially nip in the butt before it ever starts. And for me, that's knowing that I'm loved outside of my athletic achievements and having a husband and having family and friends that like of course they're proud of me to do well but they don't care if I get first or last like they'll yeah. still care about me and for me that's like always what I go back to when I'm having those really hard days um, but as far as the mental side of just like working on it I actually started working with a mindset coach that's amazing um, I love that yeah his name's Brett he's awesome um, I've because of my faith I've never really bought into the mindset coaches because I've always just found it was like fluffy words that I probably already knew um, but what I like is he really offers like tangible um, tools and skills that you can like do right away so like for example when I first started working with him I kind of was like okay let's put it to the test like I'm in the oxygen tank right now and I'm claustrophobic and I'm freaking out <laughs> yeah. like help me and he was like, all right, tell me three things that this is helping with right now. And I was like, all right, like my back's hurt. I need to recover. This helps with my sleep and it helps with 
I'll just say like recovery, like everything else. And he's like, all right, I want you to say that until you calm down. And so I just said those three things over and over. And all of a sudden I was like, fine. Yes. And so that's just like one example of like actual things he's like helped me do and just like taught me how powerful your mind can be. And yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad that you said, you know, like you, you kind of like lean towards friends and family because, you know, working with so many professional athletes over my career, mm -hmm. I, um, I always want to tell them you must exist outside of your platform. Yeah. Like if, you know, especially when an athlete retires, it's like, they they fall into a depression because like oh they were known for for this mm -hmm. as an embodiment of something i always tell them it's so important to find an identity you yeah. know outside of of you as an athlete yeah um so you don't you know you don't suffer that burnout or depression so i'm, I'm glad that you said that. actually yeah. saw on your instagram someone asked you what are you going to do during the off season or this weekend mm -hmm. like just spend time with friends and family so that that yeah. made me happy to see because yeah. i think that that probably gets overlooked a lot yeah. um even even you know me being an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. yeah, one hundred percent. It was something that I absolutely took for granted, yeah. you know, and and learned some tough life lessons. But it, and I now see the the importance of having the balance. Yeah. And um and I'm always gonna have stuff to do, so I, I can't like I'm I'm never gonna win. Yeah. So it's not really quitting. It's just that it's it's a kind of adapting. Like this is a lifelong yeah. process, you know. So. Or say you win, like say you achieve like your biggest goal, but if you don't have those friends and family to celebrate with. Yes, then it feels I found myself so doing empty. that. Like people come here, oh my God, you know, like look what you guys built, and yeah. then like because I'm just in it all the time, I don't even I don't even see it. Yeah, yeah. I, I had, when I went to Columbia to do stem cells, I was gone for like a month, and then when I came back, I was like, oh, like wow, this is like this is amazing. But I'm like, um, when I was in church, the pastor, he's like, sometimes you're too close and you can't see it, or you're too far yeah. and you can't see it. And I was like, I that's like a statement that I like reiterate to myself yeah. all the time. So I'm, I'm really glad to, to hear you yeah. adapt that mentality as well. Yeah, so um, true. I know you've been doing, you know, your recovery here with uh, with Kalani for physical therapy. Can you speak mm -hmm. a little bit about that and how that's helped you out throughout the season? Yeah, of course. Um, so I feel like for the first huge bit of my like, athletic career, I could say is I didn't really understand the importance of like having someone help you like I got essentially like a massage and that was always great but like having a physical therapist where you have like extra accessory to keep things from getting worse or if you have a problem that keeps reoccurring to fix it um it's been huge and like dry needling I think is like the most magical thing I've ever experienced <laughs> yeah. like it just fixes things that you just can't get to I feel sometimes. like you, you hate it at first but then there's a love for that oh this really works you know yeah, so it's like yeah, you like want to do it like, you can dig somewhere but just that little like twitch oh so that and obviously all the tools you guys have here like the shock wave and i don't know the name of the other one but like all that stuff is so helpful and then yeah honestly just having someone in your corner that starts to understand you as an athlete so like kalani is aware of what i have to do in the gym and so like is it realistic to not do X, Y, Z for a few days or do you have to do it and then we just need to adjust how you do it? Absolutely, like, yeah. Just having someone that understands is really helpful because generic doctors or people will usually just be like, okay, just rest. Yeah, and yeah. I, I think, you know, I, I love that Justin has a good relationship with us mm -hmm. and like, you know, we can tell him what's going on with an athlete and the, yeah. the, it's like an open floor to, to speak and I think that's so important. Yeah. And it, it allows him to do his... You know periodization and 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 protocols with you guys and also have some great people on the team to surround the athletes with because i learned quickly on a micro that i couldn't do everything you know yeah it's and actually I, I fought that for a long time yeah it's so helpful that him and kalani do have like a good dialogue because it takes me out of the equation to tell justin like hey i don't think i should do this because as a coach yeah. you look at your athlete and you're like are they just like do they really need to not do this but if Kalani tells him like, hey, she needs to do X, Y, Z, it removes me from that. So then there's less guilt on my end of like, yes. oh, I'm not doing my program or I'm asking to change and I don't feel like I should ask. So like, it's really helpful. Yeah, from literally like working inside professional sports, I think that you just brought up a topic I wasn't planning on bringing up, but athletes feeling guilty that they're hurt mm -hmm. and then the pressure to perform even when they know they're hurt, but most of them, nine out of 10 are just never going to say anything. Yep. And, um, I've seen, I've seen that, you know, end a lot of athletes careers early because they, they didn't feel the need. They didn't feel like they could speak up, you know? Yeah. And I've always been like a spokesperson for the athlete. Like everything that we do is like athlete centric or people centric where yeah. we're giving that person what they need. So I'm, I'm really glad that we all have that relationship and you have mm -hmm. that relationship with your coach, but most more you have that relationship with yourself too. Cause it's yeah. like, 
I always say like the best athletes, they're not lazy and they're going to do the work. But if, if you can't be like, Hey, today definitely doesn't feel right because now you're setting yourself up for failure later or, yeah. Hey, I'm going to, I'm resting. I'm recovering. I don't like the term resting, but I'm proactively doing stuff to make me better. Yeah. And so I feel like that's something that's really overlooked and just like, it's kind of kept real quiet totally. in professional sports. Yeah. Like, do you take one day off that you weren't supposed to take? to then save you from taking two weeks off. Yeah. And it's hard to find that balance. Sometimes you don't know, but I'm kind of learning to live more on the side of be more cautious yeah. than not. Yeah. Um, along those lines, how has some of the recovery stuff helped you? Like the hyperbaric chamber, the yeah. saunas, um, the red light bed? Yeah. Um, as a whole, I feel like all those modalities have been more like preventative in the long run. Like um, you just feel good. Like I noticed, especially like the sauna and the red light, like I feel more recovered. Um, as far as injuries go, like I've had probably two or three significant hurdles this year. I had a bone bruise at the start a, a year ago, actually now, and it just lingered for forever, but doing the shock wave and, um, the PEMF mat and just the oxygen chamber, like that really accelerated the healing on that. And then I had a couple really bad, like back just lockups and the oxygen tank and, keeping things loose with the sauna and the mineral soak like that was all super helpful yeah and i always tell people like sports is definitely not designed to be conducive to the human body so it's yeah. like you're mo anyone that plays sports you know or participates in professional sports like they're gonna have an injury at some point yeah. so i think it's like kind of like being proactive and and kind of getting on top of it or when something happens like i'm glad that you have a place to go to where you can trust totally. and and you know and that becomes a first priority until you get better yeah um, i've like called kalani like crying i'm like <laughs> yeah. are you at work i need you right now <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah no that's a, that yeah that used to happen all the time i was like a, uh an on-call uh uh a doctor you know like 24 yeah. 7 but it's okay yeah. like that's that's uh you know that that is what basically pushed me like okay i can't do this myself and yeah. slowly would relinquish and for me it was sorry because I, I love working on people so mm -hmm. you know now that i've had to you know, run the business more. I'm just glad that I can spend more time with, with the staff and, and engaging with them and, and yeah. learning from them and me teaching them and then yeah. just being able to say hi to all the clients, you know? I never had time to do that before, so. Do you still spend like a good amount of hours like on that side of the line, like um, doing work? Maybe like four or five sessions yeah. a week, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Um, obviously, if, you know, if there's an emergency or something happens, but I just don't wanna, what re really happened is I was doing it for 80 hours a week and it destroyed my hands. Yeah. You know, I got like three torn ligaments on each hand. So like when Whoa. I start working again, like it's just so swollen. Whoa. Um, and, and that's like, just yeah. from like overuse. Oh yeah. Just wow. completely over. I think it was when I was working um, with the Raiders as well. I would be okay. here. And then over there, it's just like, you're working on people through their pads and their pants. So you're having to push extra hard, yep. you know, and, and it's fast. Like, oh, you got three minutes. And I think that that really ended up hurting me. Yeah, that makes um, sense. So, you know, I'm just, I, I was like, okay, it's not, I'm not retiring, but it's time to pass the door. I don't need to do that. And that's why, you know, even we got a second PT. So that yeah. way, you know, we have that overflow and it doesn't like wear people out. But I just want to use my past experience and yeah, totally. kind of help them. Yeah. That um, makes sense. But what fuels your fire and what's at the core of your desire to reach the pinnacle? of your sport? Oh, that's such a good question. And I honestly think it, that my answer evolves. Like, I think at like a blank view, I just want to see what I'm capable of and see what my potential is. So that's one area. And then of course, like I'm competitive. So like you want to win. Yes. Um, and it's life changing, right? Like from a financial and a um, sponsorship point of view like if you win it, it is life-changing and I don't do CrossFit for the money if you're listening to this there's not a lot of money in it compared to other sports um, but yeah I mean my answer always evolves but I think right now it's just I feel like God's given me these gifts and like I really believe like all athletes whether it's football tennis like anything like you can be proud of your hard work, but a lot of it's genetic, right? Like there's people that can work so hard and they'll never be even close to what you can do. So if you do have those gifts, like I think it's really cool to use them. And yes, yeah, I'm a, you know, I'm obviously a, a big fan of, of, of all professional sports and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm a huge fan of like women's health. So you being a, a female athlete, yeah. um, can you describe what it's like to be a female athlete in CrossFit versus a male athlete in CrossFit? Yeah, um, I think the women get a lot more hype because 
the guys, like, it's obviously really cool, and they're all amazing, but, like, it's normal to see guys work out and yeah. run fast and lift heavy and do things, but, like, when you look and you see a woman, like, out racing a guy or lifting weights that you didn't think they could lift, like, I think it turns people's heads a lot more. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I like that. Yeah. Like, I love walking down, like, if I go to the casino and, like, get lunch with friends, like, I like walking around and, like, people are like, what? Like... They'll yeah. double take. And yeah. Not in like a check you out kind of way, like a, like well, what's going on. I think they, I think they respect yeah. the work, right? Like, yeah. You know, the, the, the thing I like about athletics mm -hmm. is, is, is like, is looking athletic, you know, yeah. like people know like, oh, that's an athlete right yeah. there. And I think that, um, CrossFit allows, you know, men and women to basically compete, um, organically, whereas like, you know, in football and a lot of these other contact sports or, you know, even, even in basketball, you know, you got a man's going to be seven feet tall. Mm -hmm. women can't they're not going to be seven feet tall so yeah. i do believe that in in crossfit is like the one sport where you can kind of compete with each other yeah you know? and it's super competitive which i love yeah. to watch and the cool thing kind of you just said this like with basketball players having to be seven feet tall in crossfit you can be any shape size weight yes and like it'll help you in some things and like hurt you in <laughs> others sure, yeah and so it's cool like you see athletes that like there's some tall men's athletes and they're always going to win like the run swims and the rowing and then you get a little shorty that's just like a hammer with the barbell and <laughs> yeah. i think it's so but the cool. bike the bike is going to kill them with short legs yeah you know? so it's so cool like especially as a female with like the culture always being like different and not knowing how to look and struggling with like how much should i weigh what should i look like like with crossfit it doesn't matter it's like what can you do yes and i really like that um what is your least favorite exercise and what is your most favorite exercise oh, um i don't love we do handstand push-ups and okay. i love them but we do sometimes kipping handstand push-ups i'm not like if you're familiar where like you bring your legs down and like yeah. kick up i don't like those because they kind of hurt my neck like okay. it's just like and it's, I'm not super coordinated with them, so I feel like I'm still doing them strict with my legs flinging around. Okay. So I like kind of hit, like take a hit on that. Um, so that's one of them. I, oh, let's see what else. I, I'm sure there's so many that I would tell you if I'm training. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't like these. <laughs> um, but I'm learning to like them all in their own ways. Um, yeah. It's like you see it on the paper, it's like, all right, this is just what I have to do today. Yeah. You know, so it's like a, there are certain combinations. Like, if you told me each movement on its own, I'm like, all right, I like that. But if you, like, give me certain combinations, like, no, that's terrible. Yeah. 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 Do you, do you, does that, like, make you think about, oh, damn, I got to do that tomorrow? Yeah. I, um, sometimes I don't look at what I'm doing unless I need to plan my day. Yeah. Um, if I need to plan my day, I'll look. If I don't, then I won't. Because sometimes if you see a gnarly workout right before you go to bed, it you're like, no, 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 no. Yes. Yeah. Um, so it's clear the CrossFit journey has been absolutely incredible for you. I yes. think I speak for everyone when I say we're excited to see what the future holds for you. Thank um, you. What's next on the horizon? Do you have any upcoming competitions lined up after this off season? Yeah, so I get like another week of kind of just chill, whatever I want, and then I'll start ramping up more structure in my training because um, Rogue, the company, they do an invitational in November in Scotland. So okay. I got an invitation oh, that's awesome. That. Okay. Yeah, so I have like essentially two months to get ready for that. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, have you been to Scotland before? No, I haven't. I'm not looking forward to traveling so far, but I'm excited to see the place. Yeah, I think, well, it's like, you'll be more excited to go, but like coming back, like, oh, I gotta travel back again. Yeah, yeah. Just make sure you get like TSA global entry, then you can just cut all the lines. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. That's super smart. <laughs> I'm gonna start asking sponsors if they wanna business class me. <laughs> no, for sure, no, no, yeah. for sure. At least on the way there. On the way there, yeah. yeah. So you feel good going. I was, uh, I was talking to, to Dan Ega, He's like, I just, I had to buy myself business class to go, you know, to the UFC fight because I don't want my back to hurt. Yeah. He's like, on the way home, even if I went, as I'm, I'm in, you know, locked up in economy, but he's like, I can't, I have to make sure my back's okay. Yeah, it's, so. it's a long time to sit. Sitting is painful. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to thank you for being on the 1% podcast. And, um, you know, I, I just wish you the best of luck. And I love seeing you in here and your positive attitude. Thank you. And I think that, you know, of course, we know that you're super skilled. But I just think that that type of mentality, it infects other people in thank a really you. positive way. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to congratulate you on all the success you've had so far. No, thank you guys. You guys have been a huge help and part of my season, and it is, I'm very thankful for it. Yeah, anything we can do yeah. to help, we're always here. Thank you.